Hey guys, so I'm starting the next episode of my podcast series talking to Bet Semp. If you don't know who he is, he is a really smart software engineer. He used to work at Google. He currently works at a high frequency trading firm. He makes about $1 million a year. He solved every single lead code problem. Just if you don't understand like that perspective, there's around 3,000 lead algorithm problems on lead code. That would take you th three years if you solve three problems every single day with no breaks. He, uh, that is to say, he is one of the best competitive programmers in the world. He uh, also streams on Twitch and answers any questions that you have. So you can go over to his channel. I'll leave the link in the bio. Hopefully you take something from the advice that he's given. You can apply it to your life. Hopefully you can, it'll improve your programming career. That is all. I mean, I think, a, yeah, uh, a lot of people, yeah, they just see sort of the end product, right? Because for the start of my journey, I wasn't really doing anything like outward facing. So people just, they don't really know uh, what really goes into it. How to get promoted, right? So that is definitely one way. And I don't know, maybe that is like an effective way of doing things. Mm -hmm. But the standard way or, you know, what the corporate Kool-Aid tells you to do is nice. that uh, a software engineer for almost seven years now, uh, or yeah, uh, before I was a senior software engineer at Google and uh, about a year and a half ago, I transitioned to sort of the trading side of software engineering. Uh, and yeah, I'm really interested in doing algorithms uh, and just learning more about that side of computer science. Okay. And yeah, like, and I, I think like a couple of things too that I think are really interesting is you solved like almost every lead code problem. I did like, I mean, you're at like the high frequency trading firm. You worked at Google. I like one thing I'm like kind of curious is just like, how did you, or I guess like, I don't know, have you always like excelled or like, was there ever like a, a kind of like a point where you weren't good at, cause it, I mean, basically what I'm saying is that like, when I like look at your profile, it seems like you're, you're just like excelling. Like basically like a lot of stuff that you do, like was, I don't know, was there ever any point where you weren't like that? Yeah. I mean, I think, a, yeah, uh, a lot of people, yeah, they just see sort of the end product, right? Because for the start of my journey, I wasn't really doing anything like outward facing. So people just, they don't really know uh, what really goes into it. Um, I, honestly, like up until sort of my sophomore, junior years of college, mm -hmm. I didn't really, um, I was like always on the more theoretical side of things uh, because I, I started off with, as just a, a math major mm -hmm. and uh, it basically in college I was taking all of these like theoretical CS classes and mm -hmm. for those you just you basically just needed to know how the algorithms work right but mm -hmm. you don't really have to write a lot of co code and if I'm to be honest I think for the longest time I could not implement any of those algorithms uh i just didn't have like the programming chops to do so mm -hmm. um and honestly there was like a bit of like impo uh imposter syndrome there where um you know it, it, it seems like i knew what i was doing like algorithmically whatever but i still knew that i was lacking a lot of knowledge um and i think it took like applying to different companies and just talking to people um, that I actually um, sort of started to do these types of like actually programming um, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, like I basically noticed that a lot of my friends, um, like I would be TAing a class that they were in, but at the same time, you know, because I wasn't really a CS major and like my programming skills were not that strong in the mm -hmm. at start of college that they would get internships and I would be like working uh, for like professors, like research stuff within the school. Mm -hmm. And like, that's kind of strange, right? And it, it made me realize sort of, um, I was lacking a lot of skills that are desirable in the, like, you know, in the, like the economy or whatever that, uh, like, even though I knew how things work theoretically, kind mm -hmm. of, um, yeah, it, I, I was still lacking a lot of desirable skills. Okay. And okay. So 
you're saying that like you weren't that good at like programming like if somebody asked you oh can you implement dykes or you just been like oh i can't do that or like oh man like I, let me look at like the documentation but like now you're you're basically ever like you have like the practical application and so now you can just like now kind of i guess navigate through all of that yeah yeah for sure like now i th i honestly think uh it's like flip like implementation might be one of my strong suits but like you know the harder problems it's more of just uh like i just don't know how to do it you know um mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's that was for sure something i struggled with and yeah, I mean, you know, it's not, it's like not everyone's born how to program, right? But, you know, I just put a lot of work into it. And uh, again, like, I, you know, full disclosure, like, in high school, I did like a lot of math competitions and stuff. And mm -hmm. that definitely helped with the theoretical side of things. Like, you know, I could like write proofs about some algorithms, like proof, like prove, you know, runtime bounds and things like that. But mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's very different from, you know, getting a, a program to work. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like I was, like, the same, too. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's kind of interesting, too, hearing, like, I mean, because, like I said, I feel like you're, like, I mean, extremely strong rate rank 164 or whatever um, on lead code, rank 44, I guess, for, like, problem solved or whatever. Um, but, like, I feel like, you know, it's kind of crazy, like, going from that and then, like, say, hearing, you know, somebody like that say, like, oh, yeah, like, I couldn't really do dextrose i mean obviously it makes sense though like it's it's pretty logical like i mean i don't think people are born with innate knowledge on how to like program or something it's just like practicing um for sure what oh yeah so okay so you said that you had like you were like noticing all of your friends getting internships and then you were like doing like the research stuff and so you said i guess you said to yourself like oh well i need something needs to change and like that's how you started with lead code like that's how you started like actually like practicing it yeah uh i mean keep in mind like back in the day it wasn't as competitive as um it is now and mm -hmm. uh i mean it, it was like not comparable right i think i've uh, just like uh, I, from innately how i feel about my, my progression i basically mm -hmm. like didn't do anything maybe up until like two years ago two three two two and a half years ago i was basically just wasting my time like i didn't take any of it as seriously as i did now mm -hmm. um but yeah um i that that was definitely a thing where um you know i just saw what my friends were able to accomplish and i asked them what they did and even back then I'll, the advice was basically like just go on lead code and do like 100 problems mm -hmm. um so that that's sort of what i ended up doing interesting and i guess do you have like a do you have like a gauge of like how good you were i guess because i see your contest it says like 2022 like you ranked like rank 1000 on on one contest yeah i mean so keep in mind that was uh like uh i've i've had like almost seven years of work experience right so mm -hmm. that was not um I definitely had a lot of like background or just fundamental knowledge at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's not like I just, you know, hadn't done lead code in a while. Just, well, that is kind of what happened, but <laughs> I, I was like working with like algorithms and stuff. So it wasn't like, yeah, I think I might've done my first contest like a couple of days around when I like started just doing lead code problems. Like I see you're on the, if you look at the heat graph or whatever, mm -hmm. the first contest taken is probably pretty close to the first like green day in, in June, 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had sort of uh, some fundamental knowledge for sure. Um, and you, you know, I think around that time, um, what's that site called, uh, binary search was yeah. also pretty popular so you know yeah. i it wasn't like on the first day there that was when i first started like i had been hanging out on like binary search for a bit mm -hmm. uh so you know i was definitely um like exposed to it pretty recently uh so that first contest performance isn't you know just just dropped out drop like dropped in to to 
contest as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if you study hard enough for a long time, uh, a lot of that knowledge kind of sticks around. So um, yeah, I think it that definitely helped. Okay, cool. And okay, so I mean, I, I have like a couple, I guess, directions I was kind of curious about, but we can talk about honestly i mean like literally whatever you want to talk about but i i was like curious about one like your time at google um you know how do you what do you think about like working for an hft uh i'm also curious too about like your mindset and your mentality so like i, just, I was yeah just curious about like how you like kind of approach things uh yeah i don't know things like that because leak codes are a very difficult thing i think for people to do um but uh, yeah, and I guess did any either of those call out, or did you do you have something that you wanted to? Yeah, talk about? yeah, we can we can sort of talk about. Um, so I think Google was, you know, I basically dropped in, sort of not knowing too much, um, right? And you're sort of assigned to a team, and it's a lot of luck based on. Uh, it's sort of a lot of luck what team you get, you know, like there's a team matching, but like at that point, you know, if you're just fresh out of school, like what, what do you really, right? Like you don't know what you're doing. Uh, the manager is just like, I don't know how they pick honestly. So nice. Um, but yeah, I think I got pretty lucky. I got put into like a C plus plus in for a team mm -hmm. and that really made me appreciate the language. Oh yeah. That was the other thing. Like in college, like I learned how to program in C++, but I, you know, on a very minimal level. And you know how those college classes are like, you basically don't use the STL. You're basically like writing C. Yeah. They're making you like manipulate like raw pointers and stuff. It's it's like, it's not really C++, but you know, it, it, that had some exposure. But then um, I think most of Google's code base still actually is written in C++. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think... You know, even across uh, like trading, Google's like C++ style guide is pretty, um, it's like looked upon pretty positively. Yeah. So I think that really gave me a lot of um, like a head start, right? You, you just, you started writing or I started writing like C++ code right away. And there was a lot of really um, like dedicated mentors or whatever at Google. And I think one thing I really enjoyed about Google, and I don't know if they have these at other places, is they have this thing called readability, which is basically like when you first join um, and you, let's say you put up a PR, right? Um, mm -hmm. No, you can't, you can't, um, you can't merge that PR unless yeah, someone good. with readability um, approves it. So it's not even like, uh. um, like your manager can just approve it and it's fine. Right. If your manager doesn't have readability in that language, you mm -hmm. need to get someone with readability. So the, basically they have this system where there are like a group of people who, you know, for each language, a group of people who are uh, known to be like, you know, some level of mastery over the mm -hmm. language. And these people have readability and they're able to, uh, you know, LGTM PRs that uh of some language right mm -hmm. uh, but they also have the system in place for you to get readability which is like you know you you put prs up you get readability but those readability people also like look at your pre the progression of your prs right and whether you've like mastered various areas of mm -hmm. the language right um so i think that was like especially helpful um because it's very rare where someone's like really digging deep into your code, right? Like when you get, when you put up PRs, a lot of times it's like rubber stamping, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you get a lot of like really interesting conversations surrounding like what you should do. And then, you know, sometimes your manager and them might have disagreements. So you get to see like two, uh, like pretty knowledgeable sides argue mm -hmm. a point, which I yeah. think you also learn a lot from. So yeah, that, I think the readability system, um, is really awesome at Google, and that that is what taught me a lot about C plus um, plus. Yeah, I, I imagine. Yeah, so you know, you know, I think that was like really helpful uh, for eventually like transitioning, right? Because 
Um, I don't know if I'm kind of sort of moving the question more. I guess like if I were to continue this, I would be talking more about sort of what, you know, HFTs or uh, kind of look for. So I don't know. Is there, is, should we talk a bit more about Google or what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, well, because one thing I one thing I just thought I want to ask um, was that wait do people also I think one I think you you also got senior level like really quickly I I feel like it was quickly I don't know I I don't know why but I feel like it was like in or that you had it in like five years I don't think that's really that I think it's fairly standard I think okay um. Yeah, I think like on average, it's around like one to two years per promo, but uh, I don't know. I had like some rewards at my time, which definitely like threw things, threw a wrench into things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think like it's definitely, and then now it's kind of weird. Uh, but even, yeah, like back then, I think like there's, you know, if everything goes smoothly, um, mm -hmm. I think, because uh, I had gotten it in around like, like four-ish years, which is like pretty standard, I think, um, assuming like things go smoothly, right? Um, I really wish they had like statistics on how many years it takes, like yeah. conditioned on how many reorgs you had to go through. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like considering there were some re reorgs during my time there and like, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was like, you know, not like exceptionally fast or anything. Okay. Sure. And so... Uh, I guess one of the questions I have is like, so how does like somebody like go from, how do you, how does somebody like become like a senior like level? I don't know. I, I mean, I guess like if, if somebody like just like got their offer or whatever, or like they're, they're, they're working at Fang, they're like mid-level, like, I guess what's the process or like what, what needs to be done? You know, one thing too, I kind of heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that some people cheese their like commits at google like so like the way like the structure is set up for hiring I don't, I don't remember it but like it was basically that like they'll like sometimes they'll take tasks or they'll like put prs out for like bugs that they caused when their original pr or something like that or there's like basically it's like some kind of like strategy or whatever that like people do yeah i i mean i i think yeah i think like prime engine might have talked about like there was some post once about oh yeah 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 yeah, I'm sure like from. this is done on some level, but I think it's more about because at you know even up until like the L5 promo, I think your manager has the most to say, right? Um, I think even in that post they mentioned this because it's basically like a bunch of managers in the room and they like they have some number of head accounts and it's kind of like which manager wants to like you know like throw down the hardest for for like their their team member, right? Okay. So it's kind of like, I think the manager ha like it basically sets the culture, right? If your manager is like allowing kind of like this bullshit to go on and people are being rewarded for it, then, you know, obviously um, people will see this and exploit it, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're a manager that short, sort of like, you know, is pretty connected to what the team is doing and you say, you know, you look at sort of people's commits and to see like the, you know, how, um, how much impact or the difficulty of the project, then this, these kind of, this kind of thing probably is not going to help, right? They'll just see that it becomes a waste of time. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say every manager is able to do this perfectly. Like mm -hmm. managers have a lot of stuff to do as well. Right. And it's kind of a, a thank, kind of like a thankless job for them. Yeah. Um, so I think that is, that definitely helps to like, to, to, you know, this rise of sort of abuse. I don't know. I, and I, I've never seen the stats, so I can't say, but I, I can definitely see something like that working if, you know, if it's just a bunch of managers in a room and someone just throws out these stats, even, and then like, it's all, you know, like sausage making stats or like nobody knows what, what is actually being done for sure. Yeah. I think that can definitely help you. Um, but I think luckily, like during my time there, um, I had a, a chance to work on like some pretty impactful projects and um, yeah, no, I think, I think luckily I didn't have to resort to those kind of things. Um, but yeah. And, and the other thing you mentioned is for like how, how to get promoted. Right. So that is definitely one way. And I don't know, maybe that is like an effective way of doing things, mm -hmm. but 
the standard way or, you know, what the corporate Kool-Aid tells you to do is nice. that you just need to increase sort of your impact. Right. So I think at like L3 and like most of L4, mm-hmm. you just basically have to write a shit ton of code. Like, uh, and not in a way, hopefully not in a way where you're fixing bugs that you yourself caused and based. But um, like you just want to ship like features, right? Like especially at L- so at L three, what's basically happening is like, you know, there's some work that has to be done, right? And you know, some senior engineer or like tech lead, they they they're like coming up with the work, right? And mm-hmm. if you're able to do that work quickly and correctly, and your code isn't bad. And you know you're making them look good, then your past your path to promo is pretty easy, right? Because basically how promo works is the more like higher level people you have during that um, like the promo packet that you have, mm-hmm. uh, like you know come to your defense, then the better it is, right? Yeah. So as long as you make the people in your team look good and help maybe some adjacent teams, if you make them look good, you know you help them fix bugs or whatever then the path is pretty clear, right? And I think even L4 to L5, I think, um, again, a lot of it is luck, right? If you get put into a pretty impactful project and you're able to deliver it and maybe guide some, um, you know, L3s, uh, some other L4s to Mm -hmm. like, you know, get the project across the finish line. That's basically sort of, you know, what the promo process looks like. And then after that, it becomes a lot more nebulous because you're sort of, you have to sort of look for um, like areas that it's even worth doing a project for. And it's a lot more like end to end, right? Uh, of what you have to do. Uh, so like coming up with the idea, coming up with the, a solution, like finding people to help you get the work done, right? Mm-hmm. It, it becomes a lot more of like a, a mix, a mix pot of like what actually needs to be done. And of course I never actually got there myself, like the L6. so. I wasn't even close to L6. So, you know, that part is a lot more, um, it's a lot more fuzzy, right? Of what needs to be done. But I think in the beginning, it's just, you know, if you can write good code and you can like put out the work quickly, then mm-hmm. you have nothing to worry about. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, cool. And all right, let's go, I guess, more and well, I guess more leak code stuff. Cause I also didn't want to use a ton of time too. Cause also you had to, you're doing like a lecture. Oh, well, I mean, the lecture, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not really too planned out, but maybe I'll just ramble for, no. for a bit. All right. So, yeah, so I guess the lead code question. So, um, well, a couple things are, one like, one thing I'm kind of interested, I think you've heard you say, or I think I saw you saw you say on, like, your Reddit post that, that like, lead code, like, helps you, you know, in your actual day-to-day, which I think is actually a hot take. Maybe, I don't know, but a lot of people say like Leak Code's kind of dumb. Like what do you, or I guess like how does Leak Code help you? Do you think Leak Code helped you? Or do you think Leak Code does help you with like writing code faster? Because you also mentioned that like putting out features fast is like a, you know, kind of thing that helps. Um, or you need to be able to put out features fast if you're like, you know, someone who's gonna get promoted basically. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think it is helpful. Um, I think you should try to do lead code in a language that you're writing production code in. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, also wait, did also, did you, when did you learn Python? Have you always known it? Cause you said you did. I mean, yeah, I I feel like Python, like probably took some intro class, uh, and just learned it. Uh, and and I mean, like, I feel like, you know, like you see, you see Python in a lot of like just weird places, right? Like, Mm-hmm. In your day-to-day job, even if you're working like an entirely like C++ job, like there will be like random things that are in Python that you'll like probably have to interact with. And okay. like, you know, in school, like, I don't know, like, there's like random classes that just use Python, like some data science class or something that mm-hmm. you're forced to learn it. So that, I mean, I don't think I've ever taken like some advanced Python features class or anything like that, but mm-hmm. you kind of just pick that up, right? As, mm-hmm. uh, as you work with it. Okay. Wait, and also, what do you think is like the best programming language, or do you care at all? Uh, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's about what you have to do. I'm obviously biased. I think C++ is like a really beautiful language, and mm-hmm. it sort of uh, provides a lot of really nice structure for you to build, you know, big, 
powerful tools in. Um, so yeah, I, I personally prefer C++. I want to keep working with C++. Like if I had to look for another job, I'll probably look for C++ jobs over other languages, just as a, if, you know, if I can, uh, yeah. if I'm offered that um, like opportunity. So yeah, that, that's sort of my, my take on it. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, just work with what you're comfortable with. All right, cool. Yeah, so um, you going back to I guess the original one was the Leap Code. Like, how does yeah. how do you think Leap Code I guess helps you or doesn't help someone when they're programming? Yeah, I think I mean I think it definitely helps. Like, it helps you get used to uh, the the standard uh, library of your language, right? Mm -hmm. um, you might learn tricks to do certain things faster and. Uh, I think, you know, if you're spending a lot of time working on like side projects, I could see the argument for it mm -hmm. um, that you don't really need to do leap code. But I think the issue is there's a difference between saying, I don't think leap code is helpful compared to doing side projects versus like, I feel like a lot of people who say, I don't think leap code is helpful mm -hmm. is they're saying it's leap code or nothing. Right. And in that sense, lead code is definitely helpful. I, I, I feel like a lot of people who maybe they even say like, oh, lead code's not good. Do more side projects. But mm -hmm. like how many side projects are they actually doing? Yeah, true. I don't know. I 100 percent true. I I mean, I think that's like, like I, one thing that's like I think is so annoying is I feel like the people who don't do lead code, like they literally can't even program either. Like they, they can't actually get themselves to program. So I think it's like really stupid. Yeah, I think I like that advice a lot more from people who like could solve, you know, the the below average medium, like without too much assistance. Like if people like that had this take, I'm like a lot more lenient to them having that viewpoint. But if you're just like, if you can't like do lead code easies and you, th you say it's useless, like it's not a lead code <laughs> problem. Like you just, you need to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also just um like, you know, in general, I think it helps because I think, again, it helps you get acquainted to your language, right? And learn parts of the language that you might not have known about. Yeah. It helps you a lot with like debugging in an unfamiliar setting, right? Mm -hmm. Helps you a lot in, you know, uh, writing out some code pretty quickly, right? To do what you need to do. And I think it helps you with taking an idea and like um, translating it somehow like maybe an unfamiliar idea and translating it somehow into code mm -hmm. and i think i think what it helps the most for though is for debugging um i think uh i feel like people in general are just like not that good at debugging mm -hmm. um i think there's a lot of cases where you know if you're ever on discord right like larry's channel or whatever you see a lot of posts where people are just like i tried to write this code it doesn't work and then that's it they're like can someone help me that's not really what you want to have happen, right? Um, I think if you were like at a software company and you wrote some code and it doesn't work, and every time this happened, you needed to pull someone else in, like that is, there's not that many like just blanket bad looks at tech companies, but yeah. if you have to do that, it's a, it's definitely a bad look. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think like the debugging is really what helps because everyone, you know, you start working on more complex things, there are going to be bugs. How do you resolve it? I feel like if you're just doing a personal project, like it might come up sometimes, but there's very little complexity, right? A lot of the times for mm -hmm. these personal projects. And I don't mean that as like, just as a dump on like personal projects, but I, I just mean like a lot of the times there's not, you know, too many comp like pieces of complicated logic the um you know the services or the functions or whatever there's like very distinct breakpoints between them so mm -hmm. there's like, like you know it's just like one sequential sequence of things happening right and it becomes like pretty easy to debug like you just you know is this step correct no just move on right but mm -hmm. i think like if you deal with like these more algorithmic problems you get to debug like some pretty annoying things, right? Like a recursive function or something, or like you're doing backtracking and it's just going to shit. Like, mm -hmm. I think that type of debugging, it doesn't really come up a lot, but it teaches you kind of like resilience, resiliency when like dealing with these kind of issues that if you are just doing a, a personal project, um, it might not come up that often. So I think over time, my opinion has shifted on this, but I think 
now, like more than ever, I think the debugging aspect is like really helpful. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, so, okay, cool. So the other thing too, I mean, I was curious about like HFT stuff, but I also want to talk about like just mindset and mentality, like just like I more of like, you're just kind of like your core mindset. So I don't, I'm not sure how even like to phrase the question. Hmm. I, I guess, I don't know. I guess like what, what motivates you, I guess, like why, why did you choose to go to a HFT and leave Google? Like what's, what's like driving you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm just like a really competitive person. Um, I think when I take an interest in something, I really try to be, um, the best that I can be in that mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I think you see this a lot with like people who are, I don't know, like using lead code as an example, right? Mm -hmm. um, like I like to say, think that I'm a pretty friendly guy and um, I, I mean, maybe, you know, I'll like shoot the shit with people and I'll flame people. But I think at the end of the day, I'm like a pretty helpful person. Uh, even though like, you know, I, I, maybe I take it a little far sometimes. I'll I flame just, people. Funny. Yeah, yeah, I just think it's funny. But I, I mean, I think like at the end of the day, though, if you had, if like anyone asks me for help, I'm definitely like ready to give it, right? Yeah. Maybe to a higher degree than than even some others. Mm -hmm. But I think like, um, you know, sometimes if you tune into my streams, right? Like I'm just like straight up frustrated. Like if I'm doing a problem and I can't get it, or if I do badly on a contest, like I feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. I feel like you see this like maybe with uh with like TT as well, right? Like he's yeah. a pretty nice guy. He offers people help, right? But if you ever, you know, catch him after like a bad lead code contest or something, mm -hmm. there's like a lot of frustration, right? Yeah. And I think that's sort of that's sort of like you know, um, like a demonstration of like uh, kind of like how I feel when things don't go my way. I guess you could say like I I really want to be good at what I do. Um, and that is basically the driving force to almost like my approach to like most things. Uh, okay. But you know, if I'm not interested in that thing, then obviously like, I just, I don't care. I could be terrible at it. Okay. Uh, but once I do get interested, like I just, I have a desire to just be really good at it. And I, and in some level, I want to be better than other people at it. I think that's a main thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've been pretty competitive, like you know, ever since like high school, you know, math competitions, I wanted mm -hmm. to be the best, you know, in my school, in the city, whatever. Okay. And so like, I guess like what, what made you in, in high school kind of decide, or do you know what made you or like, I, like, before, like, like, uh, sorry, like in middle I, school, for example, like, was there like a shift or like, was there, was there some moment? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe, like, you know, I, I think upbringing wise, that definitely has something to do with it. Like my parents were very strict when it came to like schooling. Um, I think they had sort of a lot, there was a lot of expectations for me. I'm an only child, by the way. Um, yeah. So I think that definitely like sort of pushed things along. But did that, I, I was, I'm also yeah, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but like, did that happen in middle school, right? Because it sounded like you said you no, were no, competitive no. Even, in high school. Even before middle school. Yeah, even before middle school, that, that that happened. Like when I was still in China, um, for sure. And then when I came here, you know, we were not that well off. I definitely felt some pressure to like excel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that probably has a lot to do with it. Also, probably just I don't know, like a chemical imbalance in my brain or something. Like that probably has something to do with it as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe never getting therapy. Like I don't know. It could be a lot of things. <laughs> Um, right. but yeah, I, I just, yeah, like, you know, I feel like ever since I was young, I was, I had been like pretty competitive. Um, and I've always, I've also just been like, a, like a grinder. I'm not really that afraid to just do things for hours. Um, mm -hmm. if I think it will help. Um, and yeah, so I think that's, that's basically it. Um, just some, something, it's something, it's definitely something innate where, uh i just i feel the need to like keep going um okay and just things further yeah. okay cool okay 
Um, so then, okay. So yeah. Okay. So you have like an innate drive to like be competitive, like be better than everybody. And that's like basically pushing you and you're really able to just grind out like the Coleco problems and things like that. I, one thing I'm trying to think of is I guess like mindset things that would help other people, but because it's innate, I'm not sure how that, how that would, I guess, what's your approach? Mm, I guess one, like, do you have fun when you're solving problems? And then two, like what happens, what happens when, when, uh, like, I guess like you're failing and you like, don't think you can solve a problem. I guess like, yeah, like what's your, what's your, I guess your kind of like your thought process there because yeah. yeah um, because I, I think that's something that's really common, right? Like, I mean, I, and I guess it's kind of, I mean, maybe it's kind of like leading, but like basically my kind of thinking is that I feel like lead code is really difficult because it's like solving problems. And I don't think most people like solving problems. And I think that, I think that when they're, when they can't solve something, like they get very frustrated and they kind of blame themselves. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of curious as what your, what your thoughts are, because again, it, I think it might, I mean, whatever your, I mean, yeah, your experience is going to be more relevant. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, you said it might be leading, but I, I don't like, I'm, I'm just going to give, you know, my straight answer to what mm -hmm. you're sort of talking about. Um, I mean, I, I get frustrated. I get very frustrated if, you know, after a contest, like I see how the problem is done. And I was like, I, I was so close, you know, or, yeah. you know, it's pretty bad. Like I'll get angry if I'm close or if I'm not close. Right. Yeah. If I'm close, it's like, I'm almost there. If I'm not close, then, you know, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. So I definitely feel the frustration. Right. But I think it's, it, I think the frustration is natural. Uh, no one, no one wants to be like, doing something where they fail at it. And then, I don't know, they're supposed to be like happy. I, I you got, that's like, that's psychotic. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's more about how you, um, like, what, what do you do with that frustration, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, like you just have to look at what you want to do, right? If you want to get better at this, then you need to use the frustration to try harder, like, mm -hmm. and I say this a lot, even though like, I might, I don't even necessarily think of this. I think it's like Kool-Aid, but I, I still think that I, I want to be able to think this way, which is that when you do badly and you don't know how to solve a problem, you mm -hmm. should view it as like a learning opportunity, right? Because this is like just a very specific time where you didn't know how to do something and now you have a chance to, to, to learn how to do it. Right. Yeah. And that doesn't come up a lot, you know, in real life, like very few times in real life, are you told like explicitly, you don't know this and this is what you should take, take from it. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't come up a lot in life. Life is a lot more opaque than, you know, competitive programming problems. So, I mean, I, I still feel frustrated and I don't like, oh, wow, I got this problem wrong, but I learned something. It's not like all like rainbows and sunshine for me either, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that people should try to look at it that way as much as they're able to. And, you know, if you can't find drive uh, from just the joy of getting better at this, then you should at least try to look at things from in that light, which is that you know, whatever you're after, you're after like a high paying job, right? You, you, you're you just trying to get better like at this, like I am or whatever your goals are, right? Mm -hmm. You need to weigh it between, you know, this thing that you want and what you have to pay to get there, right? And if you are comfortable with like sacrificing the time and the work to get what you want, then I think it's a lot easier for you to just actually go out and do it. But if you can look at the situation and go, the thing that I want is not worth putting this work for, put, putting in this work for, and you can be honest about that with yourself, mm -hmm. then, you know, I think you're, you have to like sort of live with that decision, right? But you, you can't just sort of keep putting things off and not answering this question uh, because then you sort of like made a choice already, right? Without like fully realizing the, 
what this choice actually means, right? If you're not going to do this stuff, then like fully think about the consequences of it and then don't do it, right? Don't like put off the decision and don't do it because that doesn't, that doesn't, that's just like setting you up, right? So for like a future letdown. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, you just have to look at what you want and what you need to do to get there. Um, and make a fully informed decision at the start, right? Of whether it's worth it or not. Mm -hmm. And then sort of whatever your decision is, mm -hmm. go with God. Yeah. I think I... that's how everyone should look at it. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's like a big part too is like, cause you're going to be sacrificing something and like, um, I think like you, you're, I think even better than that is like having some kind of like big, like motivation thing that you're doing, like some kind of like thing that like, I think some bigger motivation. Um, and I can, I don't know, like for you, it's like, you know, being competitive. I'm not sure where the innateness comes from that, but like, I think when I, like when I was like studying, like for me, it was like, oh, well, I'm going to help my parents. Like, or not my parents, it was specifically my mom. Cause I was basically raised by her, but, um, but like basically having like some, like just central, like value like type thing like that helps you like go like so much deeper than like oh well i want to make a lot of money i feel like well i don't know i mean i yeah but um okay other thing also glump had a question for you actually okay i see uh should i should i just read this or how wait this... also wait hold on also um shoot dang it okay well also one thing i was gonna ask too i guess we're just on the oh yeah i mean I, I i have like some time left over so i mean i like i have time to finish this out now that we've started so don't worry about like asking too many questions or whatever. okay cool okay cool um yeah so like um you mentioned like the frustration thing and then then we'll go to gump's question you mentioned the frustration thing and like what stops you for, or do you know i guess what stops you from just like giving up right so because again i think that with most people like they feel the frustration and then they just like give up like they're just like it's not worth it but i mean that's, that's also part of the reason too that i'm thinking is that like well do you enjoy this too i'm guessing that you do you enjoy like yeah solving, like, I, all the I for sure enjoy it yes i'm you know no matter how much pain i feel that i don't do well or I, I know at the end of the day i'm like learning new things which is um I don't know. I mean, not to get too philosophical, right? But we're just like, you know, we're like, we get, if, you know, if we're lucky, we get like 90 years or whatever on this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can spend your time traveling. But I think like sort of just understanding things a bit more as much as we can, like, it, none of this really matters, right? Like, maybe if you're one of the lucky people and you cure cancer or whatever, like, you know, you've made a mark on this world. But yeah. For me, like, I don't think, you know, even, even though I said I'm competitive, I don't think I have that in me. I hate bio. Like, you know, it is what it is. I, nice. I you know, we, we don't have that much time here and I'd rather spend it like doing something. Right. And everyone should find out what that something is. Mm -hmm. And for me, for now, it's, I want to learn like these new things and, and solve I might really be frustrated. Good yeah, solve good problems. Like I know it's hard. I know what, but at the end of the day, what I'm doing is difficult, right? And to be stuck, to be frustrated, it's expected. So, you know, there are times where like I get frustrated with a problem where like I do badly mm -hmm. over a period of time and I'm just like, fuck this. And then I just, you know, I take a break, right? I take a break for a week or two and then I come back. Yeah. Um, because like that, that desire, like, you know, just look, looking at, like with respect to what I said before, right? About like thinking about what you want. The thing that I want hasn't changed yet, right? Maybe one day if I'm frustrated for a long enough period of time, mm -hmm. I'll stop and my, you know, I'll focus on some different goals, right? But mm -hmm. I think the main issue though is right now, a lot of people give up without like fully realizing the implications. And I don't want to do that. Like when I stop doing this, I want to have thought out like the outcome, um, like as much as I can and make an informed decision about stopping. Right. Versus like, um, you know, you're, it's like maybe even like some kind of procrastination, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do it. You know, you're going to need to do it. You haven't given up on the dream yet. You're just yeah. not doing it. 
like I don't want that to happen. Uh, but I think if you make an informed decision about wanting something else, right? Like, I mean, it's your life, you know, who can really tell you that you're wrong? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's how I, I hope to look at it, you know? Okay. Cool. All right, cool. And I guess we'll do a glimpse question. So, uh, Glump was asking basically, how do you translate your personal or well, that's snap. It seems that you've been proficient from an early age. How are you able to translate your per personal algorithmic mathematical, uh, development into career advancement? Do you think it was, do you think prestigious college or grad school mainly facilitated this or were there things you did in the end in, in the workplace slash industry to excel? I see. Um, I mean, I, I think the pre like prestige definitely helped. I'm not going to sit here and like say that it didn't, but um, it like it, you build it up, right? Like when I was young, I didn't have a lot. I, I don't think it was like nepotism that got me anywhere, like at least in the beginning, right? So it was just about, you know, like sort of getting the ball rolling, right? You get into a good high school, you work hard, you try to get into a good college. Luckily that happened to me, but, or that happened for me. And I, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of, I, I mean, I'm fully aware that there are a lot of unfortunate circumstances where it doesn't. And I got lucky. My life didn't really have a lot of, you know, like turmoil, right? Like I didn't have, um, yeah, oh, well, I'm not going to go into like unfortunate events here, you know, knock on wood, but like I had a pretty stable life, right? Like my parents fought, but they stayed together, you know, all that jazz, whatever, like, mm -hmm. So I think definitely it helped, right? But I think hard work definitely also helped. Um, and I think once you get your foot into the door, the prestige starts mattering a lot, le like a lot less, right? Unless you're like somebody's nephew or something, which I'm not. But like, if you get into a company, right? Because you went to a good school and like, let's say you passed the interviews, right? Which for was probably from hard work. Yeah. Um, then like no one's gonna be like oh man this guy fucked up 20 times already but you know he we came from mit so we shouldn't fire him yet like i feel like that second sentence of he came from mit we shouldn't fire him yet that never gets said right i think like once you get into a, a place it's more like it starts mattering a lot more about your drive right and what you're willing to sort of do for you know, the project, whatever, the, the company, like, I don't know. But I think once there, like the hard work really matters, right? And, you know, I think there are definitely a lot of like unlucky situations. You could have a bad manager, right? And they could take credit for your work. Like this, this happened to like friends of mine. And I think, so I do think luck plays a big part, right? Luckily that didn't happen to me. Luckily, like all my managers have treated me with like respect and none of them have tried like these underhanded things, right? Um, so yeah, there's the, I think it's a combination of like, you know, just luck and hard work, right? Um, but not, neither is like a substitute for the other, unless you have just like an extreme degree of luck or you work like extremely hard, right? Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely just sort of a combination. Um, and I think someone said, doesn't, all the hard work affect your personal life. Yeah, I mean, you have to find a balance, right? Like, luckily, I have, you know, uh, a girlfriend and a family who are like understanding of what I want to put into it. And, you know, they, they sort of cut me some slack, let's say. Um, but yeah, for sure, right? Like, if you have to take care of like, some sick members of your family or something, then you can put a lot into it. And that's sort of the, the you know the luck aspect right that i mentioned okay oh, oh my god sure I answered the question what were there things you did in the workplace i think yeah so i mean with regards, with regards to that second question i would just say like just try to work hard and hard work does pay off um and if you're at a really shitty place where it doesn't work really hard on the code and that will pay off so yeah, yeah. honestly honestly i wasn't sure if if glump was asking like actual like actionable plans or or if it was more general but um i mean i guess he'll message again if, if that's the case yeah oh yeah uh, for so sure. how many people 
how many people do you know at like those like you know any prestigious like type of thing um how many people do you know that were just like like that you think were just like highly regarded like nepotism or i don't know whatever like basically just like like subpar workers you know it's funny um I don't think I've met anyone, like, especially where oh, I currently, really? I mean, at Google, I'm pretty sure there are some. Where I currently work, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's, like, entirely based on performance. Um, okay. Like, everyone that gets hired, are they're, like, extremely competent. You know, they work extremely hard. They're all very knowledgeable. Like, this is probably, like, the highest, you know, like, pedigree of, of employees I've ever had the luck of, like, being a part of, like, you know, this, this company. I don't think, I, I mean, if nepotism played a role, then it was definitely like, you know, secondary, like tertiary to whatever other qualities they have. And I think at a lot of these firms, um, I think there's very, I'm going to be honest, I, 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 maybe I'm like, I've just drank too much of the Kool-Aid. I think there's very little nepotism. Um, I think everyone is too competitive at these firms to let okay. nepotism like play a central role in hiring okay cool yeah cool cool uh okay cool then uh, i think i think the only thing i just had was like, just about like the hft stuff like how how do you how do you like it compared to google what is it what do you think is different compared to google doing hft stuff do you want to stay doing that is that is that your plans Oh yeah, I think it's my definitely my plan for now. Um, how's I mean, I I personally like the work a lot more. I think um, there's a lot more interesting problems being um or that being like worked on. Um, I think there's like because the teams are so small, like you really get um to see like er like all the different facets of the business instead of at like at Google where you're working on like a small part of a small part of a small part of something. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it a lot. Um, I think it definitely matters though, like where, um, where you, you work, right. Uh, I could definitely see just from like, you know, I've been here for a while, like just from looking at how much work is being done and like how much work is required, uh, to get things, um, running smoothly. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see where if you're at a place where, um, you know, maybe like people didn't give as much of a shit about what's being pushed into the code base. Like it could definitely get really bad really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like I, so I think that definitely really matters. I, like, I think, you know, a lot of people like, you know, they, they seek out the big names, right? I think I have some idea of like, I think now it's not just like purely like masturbatory, just like, oh, I want to get, you know, I, I got to get into like the top three firms. Or, like, I think now that I actually have worked in one and seen sort of like just what it takes. Um, yeah, I think you shouldn't just join like some, unless you like relish the challenge, right? But I think like the, just the quality of things could go down the hill like really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is def definitely something to watch out for. Um, just because like, you know, there's so much work being done, right? Everyone's like super productive. And like, we've all seen like the 10X engineer memes, right? Like you don't want a bunch of people who work really fast. And then like, you know, the, the, code, be the code base becomes like an unstable piece of shit. Like mm -hmm. you need people who work fast and who do things correctly, right? Mm -hmm. who like uh are following some kind of like central vision right and um i think th those things are all like really important now and uh i mean i think they were important before as well but like i feel like at google you see the effects of it a lot less like so little code is being written to be honest um and you know there's the projects are so all sort of like built on some central unit that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting you know mm -hmm. um that it's really hard to like drastically fuck up right um but i think at like these smaller firms where you're doing almost everything in-house like 
yeah, the, 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 you know, the technological blow up of like complexity, it's, it's really, it's really something you have to be careful of. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, with that said, that's what makes the work interesting, right? You're, that's what, you know, makes it helpful to be able to write clean, correct code fast. It's what mm -hmm. makes it helpful to debug things fast, right? These are like, you know, some of the things we mentioned before, they, they really are important. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty scary too, because I imagine like my thought process was that Google would have been super intense about that. I mean, it sort of is, but just like the blast radius is like really small, right? Yeah. You're always working money. on the small part of something, right? Like, let's say like, you're working on some like small part of ads, right? It's like very unlikely that your change will like bring down the entire like ad serving like system, right? But at these smaller shops, like if you push a bad code change, I mean, there's always been that really famous story, right? Of um, like Knight Capital Group where they made like some bad config change and they lost like $400 million in a day. Like that can happen. Uh, yeah. That probably wouldn't happen at Google. Uh, so yeah, like it, it, there's definitely a lot of pressure, right? It's like, you know, bad shit happens at four in the morning and like someone's gotta be up to fix it, right? Luckily it's the more senior people cause they know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a, a, like a more challenging work environment and uh, more stressful, but I'm still learning a lot. So I think it's, it's like good for my just long-term growth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. So, uh, all right. Well, yeah, we only last two, last two questions, and then because we can do that lecture. So, uh, one thing I'm curious about is like, what are your goals for the future? What's I guess like what's I don't know, do you have any like plans or is it? I don't know. Are you doing content? Are you planning on doing content or? You know, just stuff like that. Mm, I think that's kind of hard to say. Like, I think I do. I mean, I do want to, I mean, I guess like kind of a long-term goal is I want to get to like orange in mm -hmm. code forces. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that would be, that's like a pretty worthwhile goal for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think it's not one of those like fake goals where like, you know, you're already there and you just have to like, you know, take a couple, I think I, I will have to learn um, more things to get there. Okay. Um, so that, you know, that's one aspect of it, you know, work-wise, um, you know, I want to be sort of like more knowledgeable about the work that my firm does and be, you know, just grow like career-wise for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I don't know. There's probably one, like, I should probably get married and like have kids while I still can. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess those are just the goals in like no particular order of importance. Uh, okay. Yeah. Although it is kind of weird that I put it in that order. Um, but anyways. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think that's definitely something I'll have to watch out for that, like, the day to day is so like pressure driven that I don't want to like lose focus of the things that I actually do want to do. Um, so that's yeah. something I'll have to be careful of. That's really interesting. Cause I think I probably like the really good thing too, is like you've been, is or at least it sounds like you've been focusing like really, really intensely, like, you know, on this area, like, you know, well either on your career or either on, you know, doing like the cohort stuff. And I mean, it like obviously pays off like massively. Um, it's just interesting because like for me too, like, I mean, I, for me, I, I'm kind of more all over the place. Like I don't have like intense focus on like one thing, although I mean, I, I kind of do, but, but there's a lot of things that like, it's very easy to get distracted basically, especially too. I feel like, especially living in like the United States, it, at least when I was living there, it feels like, like there's, there's always like somebody who's like, maybe like, like you either have your, your friends who are like doing like some kind of other thing or like, you know, somebody else is doing like some other thing. Um, yeah, I don't I just think it's interesting. Like, it's really interesting that you've been like, you're really focused on like staying like basically this path. And it feels like it's a path that you've been on for like, I don't know, like four years, five years, whatever. 
maybe seven years. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess like I've always been, uh, like, a I don't know, like a cave dweller, homebody, whatever. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. And then, then I have my last question and then, um, also Obez asked the question. He wants to know, uh, did you work in research side of the, of the uh, HFT or more infra? And then like, what are the differences of research versus infra? Yeah. Um, I would say for sure. I work more on the infra side. A lot of the research side are basically with like people with like math or, you know, physics PhDs. Um, so insane. I think the research. Okay, so what is the difference? Uh, I'll, I'll, I I don't know if I can get into too many details here, but on a high level, right? The difference is, um, what the researchers do, right? Is that like they hmm, they might read a, a new paper, right, and think about, okay, this is like a more efficient way that, or like a different way we can sort of come up with a strategy, right? Um, and that might involve a couple of different things, right? They might need to incorporate like new data sources into, you know, whatever, like training data or training process, right? Um, they uh, might need you to work with them, right? Maybe they need to compute some forms of the data that, you know, because they're, they're not like, a lot of them are good at programming, but a lot of them like just don't have the full fledged like training that people go through. And they might need like your ideas on how to like do something more efficiently, right? Um, so I think like that's, but then like, I think at least from an infra side, right? A lot of the research, what the researchers do, it's like very complex, like to the other side, right? Like both sides, there's some stuff that go over the fence, but there is some like knowledge that they just have uh, that you don't. Um, Luckily, like I work at a place where everyone's like super open to talk about things, talking about things, but at the end of the day, you have work that you need to get done. Right. So there is like, at the end of the day, there is like a fence, right. It, you just, it just can't be helped. So, um, for the infra side, right. There's a lot of different things. There's, you know, um, the, like the, the trading execute, like the execution engines themselves, right. Like what's actually like doing the trades. Uh, there's like very networking, various like networking related uh, things that we need to do for like connections with the peers to actually do the trades. Um, there's like the research infra, right? These pe uh, like the researchers are like writing these like tasks that I need to do, but something has to like run those tasks, right? And a lot of that is like built in house because like you know cloud costs are really high at. They're basically there to like scam you out of your money, like just uh, abuse like whatever inefficiencies you have. Um, so yeah, like you know, it's it's definitely like many moving pieces, right? Um, and every part of it is like critical to the business. Um, so I think like as engineers, like more than maybe researchers, like there's a lot more like like of different hats that you have to wear on on like what parts of the system you need to work on. Um, so yeah, hopefully that sort of gave you some glimpse on what each side works on. And yeah, like uh, what the infra side are responsible for. All right, he says, thanks. Okay, cool, that's um, last question. So I, I... I have a, there's a lot of college students who watch all these like Twitch streams and I want to know, do you have any advice for them? Um, yeah, it's basically that like there's, yeah, there's a lot, there's always in Chi Chi's chat and all that. There's a lot of college students watching. Yeah. Uh... It's like, yeah, just like someone who's like, I guess 18 years old, like they just signed up for their CS class. Just signed up for CS. Haven't you been watching the news? Um, okay. Anyways, um, some advice. Okay. So I think college is one of the last places where you're guaranteed to like spend your time studying and be rewarded for it. Um, you know, I think it's a great place to 
build up relationship with friends, find people that have similar interests as you and get exposed to like other interests. Um, get like super drunk at the frat party. Yeah, you know, everything in moderation, uh, of course. But I think, um, yeah, you know, just don't be afraid of like doing what is outside of your comfort zone. Um, try to like, I, mean, I don't know, like take that class that you're interested in or, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like hang out with those friends, like do drugs. Okay, just kidding. Um, nice. But like, nice. uh yeah i mean at the end of the day though like try to work hard right try to realize that you know this is like an opportunity to uh springboard your career right um and it is definitely a lot it's more competitive now than when i went to college right it's getting more and more competitive uh but you know it's like i think that's one of the nice things about like humans we can adapt right um you you just have to be better than you know some percentage of your peers right so i think like don't be afraid of putting in the hard work right um like think about what goals you have like talk to people who are more knowledgeable whether that's your professors like um your upperclassmen whatever um and come up with a plan right don't make the plan too detailed. That's like something I feel like people a lot of times just like take forever to come up with a plan and never end up getting to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and just, I think the most important advice though is to just work hard, right? Just try to come up with a goal and work towards it. It's pretty unlikely that if you have a goal and you're working hard towards it, that you're doing something completely wrong. Like, you'd have to be like fun, like just extremely unlucky for that to happen. So don't be scared of like putting in a little extra work because like you haven't optimized everything to like the nth degree, you know, just work hard. And I think you'll find that it'll get you closer to the goal and it'll probably get you closer than if you had spent more time thinking about what to do. Um, so yeah, um, work hard, I guess. That's, that's my advice. All right, cool. Thanks. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right. So yeah, that's going to be that. And we'll close that and do the actual lecture for learning. That said, I feel like most people don't want to learn at all. So I yeah, like, I basically just splitting this stuff up because 